Go dummy, go beast on them. I go beast. Go deep, I OD on them. Apply pressure, put heat on them. Put that five zero zero degrees on them. Go dummy, go beast on them. I go beast. Go deep, I OD on them. Apply pressure. What is up, you guys? Welcome back to the channel. Y'all are stepping into my realm right now, in my element. I love talking about abs. <laughs> I get a lot of questions and requests for videos like this. So thought I would put together my current six pack ab routine, specifically from home, because your girl's been doing nothing but home workouts. So today I thought I would share with you guys my favorite ab workouts and some tips and tricks I learned along the way as well. So for me, I personally like to train abs, isolate them every single time I train in general. So I usually train anywhere, depends, four to five days a week. So it is guaranteed that anytime I train, I will add in about a 15 minute ab session at the end. A lot of people say that you do not need to like isolate abs at all and that your compound movements, your everyday workout movements, as long as you keep your core tight, which you always should, is just enough to get by without having to actually target the, that ab section. And that may totally work for some people, but I know for me, that's how I started out and I was not, I just wasn't satisfied, all right? I wanted more from the core. So that is when I started doing isolation and frequently training the freaking abs. And that is when I started to notice a major difference. A lot of this was trial and error, okay, along the, the years of training. But uh, this is kind of the routine that I have found the most beneficial for me. And that really reaps the most benefits. But this is just me again. Everyone's different though. So take my advice for what it's worth. So before we get into this video, if you are not already, definitely hit that subscribe button. Follow your girl on IG for all things fitness. Cause together we got this. Yes, we do, baby. <laughs> so guys, the absolute number one tip before I get into the workouts, it has to be said. It is true what you hear. The abs are in fact made in that freaking kitchen or wherever you cook your food. You wanna be in a slight caloric deficit, that definitely helped me out big time. And keyword, slight. You are not starving yourself. Believe it or not, girl, I've done that before and I've been there. That's coming up in another video. That's a whole different topic. Don't starve yourself. Do what's healthy for you, boo. And stay super freaking hydrated because the more water you are drinking, the more you're flushing out, the less water retention in the midsection especially. So do not get it twisted. I do have my fair share of cheat meals. Yes, I do. And believe it that the next day I don't have any abs. Yes, you best believe that. But it's all good because water weight sheds and you're back on track. So now let's get into the fun part, the fun workouts to help build that six pack on you, girl. So I personally like to break down the abs into three different parts. I like to focus and train solely upper, lower, and obliques. This just simplifies it in my mind so I know I'm targeting it all. So the very first thing I like to do in my ab circuit is I like to just do body weight abs. This is just to isolate each individual group without adding in any weight. This is just to wake them up individually, okay? We're knocking on each of their doors and we're getting their freaking attention going. This is what I like to call my warm up session. So I only do one, yes, only one set, 15 reps of each of these workouts. So the very first exercise I like to do are reverse crunches with a wrap around. So this engages my upper and my lower at the same time. From there, I like to really just focus on a standard crunch. This is just keeping a very consistent tension on the abs and it really just burns up the entire midsection. From there, I like to isolate my obliques. So one side at a time, I like to focus on doing twist crunches. One set to my left and one set to my right. You know, girl, you gotta give them some equal love and some equal attention. You cannot do one without the other. So fun fact, I love warming up with scissors. This is perfect isolation for your lower region here. I 
actually really like it because you're doing one leg at a time, so it's not so much stress on the lower back. You guys know me, I have a pretty bad freaking lower back, so there's that. The trick to these is to not let your feet touch the ground. This is full tension mode because that's what's gonna really burn you up, girl. And lastly, in this warm up, I love doing alternating toe touches. You can totally stick to just doing standard toe touches, but I like to add in that little bit of alternating where my left hand will touch my right toe and vice versa. This just adds in a little bit more movement, a little more engaging of the core, and it's that perfect little extra challenge, all right? In all honesty, I don't actually touch my toes. <laughs> <laughs> so don't get it twisted. Go as far as you can comfortably. But I know if I were to really strain and try to touch my toes, I'd probably hurt my lower back. Some people have more flexibility than others. So don't feel like you failed if you didn't actually touch your toes. It's all good, girl. Just go as high as you can because the higher you go, the better the burn. But by all means, do what's good for you. So now that we are nice and toasty and roasty, I like to really incorporate some weight, baby. But I do not go to my max weight. I get like a warm up kind of weight going. I like to grab about a 10 pound dumbbell. If you are performing these exercises at home and do not have access to a dumbbell or anything, totally grab a heavy book. Grab something, anything that's heavy that you can securely hold and it'll do the trick, okay? So from here on out, every exercise that you see is done three sets, about 12 to 15 reps per exercise. This now is where the real muscle growth is going to come from. This is where the muscles are gonna pop on out. So I like to start my weighted portion of the circuit off with basic toe touches, okay? There's very minimal movement going on here. I just wanna focus on adding weight and centralizing it right above my abs, okay? By doing it like this, your abs are constantly under tension. So it's almost like doing a pulse in a way. So now we're turning it up a notch with a reverse crunch dumbbell pass over. This really emphasizes the stretch and contraction with the weight. So you have a lot more of a dynamic movement and then passing over your knees and tucking your knees in will help activate your lower region. The trick to this is to keep the weight as high above you as possible to allow your knees to kind of slip right underneath and through. This just ensures that you're activating your upper muscles, okay? The higher you go, the more your upper region is being worked. So as you guys can see so far, we've taken a lot of weight and focused right on that upper area, but don't get it twisted, all right? Because the lower abs need their attention too. You want that V, right? So what I like to do is I actually like to do weighted leg raises, and by all means, the 10 pounds I'm using is absolutely the highest weight I will use because I have such a shysty lower back. So I like to place them without sneakers, all right? I'm not wearing sneakers in this clip because my freaking dumbbells still got that nasty on it. So I didn't want my white kicks to get dirty. All right, sue me. So what I like to do is go with my socks, <laughs> tuck the dumbbell right in between and kind of hold the dumbbell with my heels. So I'm kind of sealing it in with my heels. And I just lightly bring it up very slowly, mind you. I do not overdo it with this exercise. Quick movements are not my friend. Slow and steady upwards and downwards does the trick for me. And I do not, I repeat, I do not go crazy high with this either because I don't know about you girl, I don't know if you know what it is, but you got that weight up in the air and if you slip up, <laughs> You gonna hurt yourself. And um, mm, then they're done that. So we, we just won't. All right guys, so for the very last couple of workouts, whoo, this is where we really shine. This is where I am putting myself to the test. This is where I am literally gonna kick my own ass. You ain't gonna get no six pack. You ain't gonna shred up <laughs> without pushing yourself to the limit sometimes. Mm. So I take those 10 pounds and I go ahead and I trade them in for double the weight. I go about 20 pounds. I like to stick with 20 pounds only because dumbbells just are, for me, in my own opinion, it's not as stable as barbells. So I go a little lower in weight when I use dumbbells. They're a little more loosey-goosey and a little more prone to slip-ups. I ain't trying to, you know, <laughs> crush my skull. 
This is a lot of wrist control, okay? You need some strong wrists if you're going crazy heavy. So for me, rather than holding the dumbbell like this, especially when it's heavier, it's hard to grab you know, your hands around it. So to be safe so that you don't slip and crush your head. <laughs> so guys, I like to position the dumbbell handle right in the middle of my palms, just like this, resting right in between. And then I interlock my fingers like this, just right around for ultimate security. It don't go nowhere. I kind of just keep my thumbs overlaying each other like that. And it's like I'm holding hands with myself, but that dumbbell, okay? You keep it nice and secure, girl, so it don't go nowhere. So guys, even with this heavier weight, I still keep it consistent and I do about three sets of 12 to 15 reps per exercise. So first up, we are back at the toe touches, you guys. I'm sorry, but this is where my freaking abs be popping. The toe touches do something, these pulse movements, okay? They do something to just unlock a key. We're all sun afterwards, my abs, you just can't deny it. <laughs> all right guys, so with heavier weight, we're up in the ante just a little bit. We're actually going to be doing a combination workout, yeah. So here I like to pretty much keep the weight above and perform a scissor into a reverse crunch. So we're working the lower region, but at the same time with the weight centralized above your abs, you're still maintaining that line of tension. And again, the feet do not touch the ground. They are elevated the entire time off of the floor, as well as your shoulders being up off of the floor. So your whole freaking core right now, it's gonna be on fire. I'm just warning you, it's gonna be on fire. Okay, so last but not least, huh, believe it or not, this is actually my absolute favorite ab workout of all time. I could do them all freaking day. So they are none other than side bends, baby. This is a workout that I like to do standing. You could do it kneeling, but I like to stand. It's a little more stable for me. So I know this exercise can be a little bit controversial, but for me, ooh, girl, I um, I swear by the freaking side bends, I'm just saying. I like to perform these exercises in very slow and controlled movements. You do not want to swing your body back and forth like a pendulum, because that's where you're gonna F your shiz up, for real. What I like to do is just slow and steady, wins the race. This way I can really feel the muscle being activated and stretched. It really feels good. And for me, when done properly, it really helps to stretch my lower back out a little bit. So always keep a really nice neutral spine. Do not hunch forward, do not hunch backwards, because that is where your spine's gonna get a little iffy wiffy, and then you're gonna end up really damaging yourself. <laughs> so what you wanna do is just come up to a neutral spine and then back down again. You don't wanna like go over into the other side. Save that for your next round when you isolate that other side. So guys, this is just how I personally like to end my ab routine, but by all means, like when I'm feeling up for it, if I'm at the gym or what else, I can add in a little bit of a decline crunch on the bench, things like that. But these are just my staple exercises that I pretty much do religiously. And then it's if I have extra time or if I'm really feeling like a beast that day, then I'll add in other things, machines, things like that. All right guys, so that was my full six pack ab routine. Hope you guys enjoyed this video and found it helpful. So thank you guys so much, all of you who requested this type of video, definitely more to come, so stay tuned. And please, by all means, if you guys have any questions about what I shared with you today, comment down below and we can chit chat it up. Again guys, if you enjoyed this video, definitely hit that subscribe button and follow your girl on IG for all things fitness because together we got this. And I definitely post a lot of workouts on there several a week, so you don't wanna miss out. Thank you all so much for watching and I'll catch you in my next video.